TV20, Utica, Rome. From ABC News, World News Sunday, here's Sam Donaldson. Good evening. Frontier Airlines, a big air carrier in the Rocky Mountain West, stopped flying today, shut down by its present owner, People Express. Thousands of passengers were stranded, 4,700 workers idled. And unless Frontier's pilots and United Airlines make a deal tonight, paving the way for a sale to United, Frontier will file for bankruptcy and be out of business permanently by tomorrow. Details of all this from Stephen Ogg. was the first word many passengers had that Frontier had shut down. We regret to announce that Frontier Airlines has suspended operations indefinitely. Others found out when they arrived at the terminal that the nation's 15th biggest airline was no longer flying. I came here and some, one of you men, I think, come up and said to me, uh, were you going Frontier? And it's closed. It folded last night. And I mean, I couldn't believe it. The trouble is, it's gonna cost me probably twice as much to go. So we may have to turn around and go home. It's kind of a bad deal. A bummer. The reason Frontier stopped flying is quite simple. It ran out of cash. I think primarily that they were number three in the Denver hub, and they were up against a, two very tough and much larger competitors, Continental and uh, United, and they just simply ate Frontier's lunch. In fact, Frontier didn't have much lunch left to eat. What with United's sheer size and market power and Continental's discount prices, Frontier's been losing $10 million a month, at least since last November when it was purchased by People Express. But People itself has lost $132.5 million the first six months of this year. And to help keep itself in business, it put Frontier up for sale. The winner was United, which offered $146 million. But the sale was stopped because United's management and its pilots were unable to agree on how quickly United should raise the wages of Frontier's pilots to match those of United. The increase is about 70%. Frontier would be the third major airline to enter bankruptcy since airline fares and routes were freed of government regulation in 1978. In the same period, about nine mergers have been either completed or proposed. Ironically, it was to Continental that Frontier passengers turned today to try to find another flight. Three years ago, Continental plunged into bankruptcy, ridding itself of its expensive unionized pilots in the process. Now it's larger and more profitable than ever before. Airline analysts expect more bankruptcies or mergers as the industry continues shaking the weaker airlines out of the business. The result is going to be fewer airlines. And that could mean more stable schedules, but at higher prices. Stephen Ogg, ABC News, Washington. Tragedy struck National Guard firefighters in Idaho today. A personnel carrier taking exhausted men back to their base camp near Boise careened off the road into a creek bed. Four firefighters were killed, 17 others injured. Coming up later in this broadcast, Philippine President Corazon Aquino leaves the country for the first time since coming to power, even as Ferdinand Marcos steps up the agitation for his own return. It's Ivan Lendl versus Michael Jordan, not on the courts, but on the course. And the Navajos learn how to farm the desert with a little help from Israel. World News Sunday. Brought to you by Extra Hold Fasty. You won't believe how great it holds your lower dentures. You won't believe how great it holds your lower dentures. It's Extra Hold for lowers. Finally, I can eat, sing, <laughs> even laugh with more confidence. It's Extra Hold for lowers. You won't believe how great it holds your lower dentures without messy ooze. It's extra hold for lowers. And it's from Fast Teeth. You won't believe how great it holds your lowers. You won't believe it. To the 140 million check writers in this country. Here's my check. Take note of this sign. When you see it any place, anywhere in the country or the world, Telecheck says your check is welcome. I have a check and uh, this out-of-state license? No card to carry, nothing to join. Just look for the red and white Telecheck sign. A sign for all 140 million of you. Your first check? Yeah. Is it okay? Make that 140 million and one. Telecheck says your check is welcome. United States and Egyptian forces began joint maneuvers today off the coast of Libya, but well outside Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's so-called line of death. U.S. officials say these maneuvers are not intended to provoke any new conflict. But one official told the Washington Post, 
With Gaddafi, you never know. Philippine President Corazon Aquino is in Indonesia tonight, first stop on a trip abroad that has a lot of people watching closely. Not because of what she may do abroad, but because of what could happen back home. Mark Litke reports from Manila. Corazon Aquino was given an elaborate military salute as she prepared to leave on her first foreign trip as president. She appeared at ease and confident as she reviewed the troops and sounded equally confident as she told assembled dignitaries she was leaving the government in good and trustworthy hands. But in fact, not everyone here shares Aquino's confidence. Filipinos have not forgotten the attempted takeover of the government only last month by Mr. Marcos's former running mate, Arturo Tolentino. And for weeks now, local newspapers have been filled with inflammatory headlines and wild rumors about new potential coups and plots. Some of the rumors were fueled by Defense Minister Juan Ponce and Relay, who announced that military intelligence had uncovered a plot to kidnap Aquino and other leaders in preparation for the return of Mr. Marcos. Military leaders here are taking no chances. The armed forces have been placed on red alert, but even the soldiers near the palace today didn't act as if they felt very threatened. Tonight, as Mrs. Aquino arrived in Indonesia, the Philippine capital was calm and peaceful. If it remains this way, it'll be a big step toward building confidence in the stability of the Aquino government. Mark Litke, ABC News, Manila. A few hours before Ms. Aquino left the Philippines, former President Marcos gathered supporters around him at his exile home in Honolulu to complain that his successor is opening the door to a communist takeover of their homeland. More on the Marcos rally from Greg Dobbs.